Hello, you're watching Airy TV and welcome to your English news broadcast. I'm Hamen Barakat with your news and these are your top stories. Announcement from the Ministry of Health. Seminar for Nationals in Juba. Thousands evacuated as rail stations and roads submerge. Canada's BC declares state of emergency as wildfire fight fires surge. 23 patients have been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and tests carried out today at quarantine centers in Gashbarka, Southern and Central and Ansawa regions. Out of these nine, patients are from quarantine centers in Germaika 4, Ali Gidder 2, Adibara 1, Omahajar 1, and Mugrai 1, Gashbarka region. Six patients are from quarantine centers in Mendefera 3, and Gala 2, and Saganati 1, Southern region. Four patients are from quarantine centers in Asmara, Central region. Four patients are from quarantine centers in Karen, Ansaba region. On the other hand, eight patients who have been receiving medical treatment in hospitals in the central region have recovered fully and have been discharged from these facilities. The total number of recovered patients has accordingly risen to 6,166, while the number of death standards are 32. The total number of, of confirmed cases in the country to date has increased to 6,473. Ministry of Health, Asmara, 21 July 2021. The Eritrean Embassy in Juba, in cooperation with the Minister of Justice of the Republic of Sudan, organized a seminar for nationals in Juba aimed at increasing at the understanding of nationals on the law of that country. At the seminar, legal advisors of Minister of Justice of South Sudan gave extensive briefing on the law of that country. According to the, to the report from the Eritrean Embassy, the objective of the seminar was to enable the nationals to have proper understanding of the legal system of South Sudan and, 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 and identify their rights and obligations. Speaking at the seminar, Mr. Johannes Tesfam Mikael, Eritrean ambassador in South Sudan, said that the seminars and workshops will be organized in cooperation with concerned South Sudanese government institutions with a view to increase and awareness and understanding of nationals. Indicating the significance of the seminar, the participants called for its sustain sustainability. And now we'll be back with international news after a short break. Torinsha rain has caused severe flooding in parts of central China, forcing people from their homes and leaving stations and roads submerged. More than 10,000 people in Henan province have been evacuated to shelters following the recurrent rainfall. At least 12 people have died in the city of Zhengzhou since the flooding began, authorities there confirmed. More than a dozen cities have been affected with main roads forced to close and flights cancelled. Henan province, which is home to some 94 million people, has issued its highest level of, of, weather, of weather sorry, warning the following an, an unusually active rainy season. According to officials, there are also fears that a dam in Henan province could collapse after it was damaged by the recent storms. A 20 meter equaling to 65 feet bridge has emerged in the, in the dam in Luoyang city. Soldiers have been deployed to the area and statements from the army warned it could collapse at any time. Wildfires are nearly actively burning across western province of British Columbia, which saw record heat last month. The Canadian province of British Columbia has declared a state of emergency aimed aimed a surge in wildfire fires that have forced hundreds of people from their homes and could worsen in the coming days. According to Provincial Wildfire Tracker, 
299 blazes were actively burning across PC on Tuesday afternoon, including 18 were sparked during the previous two days. Mike Farnworth, PC's Minister of Public Safety, said during a news conference that more than 30,000 180 firefighters and other staffs are fighting fires across the province. He said more evacuations could be ordered as the weather forecast during the next few days may fuel the blazes. We have reached a critical point, Farnworth told reporters. However, the state of emergency will last for at least 14 days and can be extended. The BC government said in the statement, 40 evacuation orders affecting approximately 5,724 people are currently in place, while 69 evacu evacuation alerts under which residents are told to be ready to leave their homes at the moment's notice, affecting more than 32,000 people have also been issued. And now a reminder of the top stories. Announcement from the Minister of Health. Seminar for Nationals in Juba. Thousands evacuated as the rail stations and roads submerge. Canada's BC declares state of emergency as wildfire fires surge. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. Have a great night.